polio. It had the power to paralyze a president and mobilize an entire nation toward an unprecedented public health response. Give every dime and dollar that you can spare. The result? Two successful vaccines. But now, decades later, survivors who thought they'd beat polio are being cursed again. We were told when we finished rehab, this was as bad as it was going to get. Nobody knew about post-polio syndrome at that point. And today, polio is poised to return once again. There are one million American children who are unvaccinated against polio, in spite of the fact that polio has returned to the United States. Will our past come back to haunt us? Join us as Healthline presents Polio Revisited. Hello, I'm Dr. Kevin Soden. Laboratories like this were on the front line when the war on polio was fought. And though vaccines are now available, the potential remains for this crippling virus to make a comeback. People believe that the polio vaccine in 1955 cured polio, and, and it's often said that the vaccine cured polio. The vaccine didn't cure polio, it just prevented people from getting polio. The vaccine did a wonderful job, and that's one of the problems, that the vaccine really is a victim of its own success, that Americans and others have just forgotten about polio because they don't see it. What we have to do is to show Americans again, those who don't remember polio, what polio was like. I had been swimming, and uh, the next day is when I, when I got sick. I was about five or six, I'm not quite sure. It was the summer of 41, I believe. We went to the seashore for that summer in Far Rockaway, and that's where I got it. I got up and I walked to the car, and got in the car and laid down on the back seat they drove probably maybe 30 minutes. And when we got there, I could not walk. I remember being in a big ward with lots and lots and lots of other kids. They put that quarantine uh, uh, sign on my house. And of course, people would go by and look at it, turn around and run. It was kind of scary with uh, my parents coming in because they had to wear you know, the, the thing over their nose and the kids weren't allowed in so that they, you know, they had to be protected from getting polio. So my brothers and sisters were able to get up on a hill and wave to me from, uh, you know, from outside the window. During the summers, during the polio months, you know, July, August, September, the pools would close, the theaters would close. Parents kept their children home. They were terrified. You could see paralytic uh, people in the streets all the time, which we don't see anymore, with withered limbs, with uh, crutches or prostheses. So it was, uh, it was a very feared disease. In the book Polio Voices, historian Daniel Wilson captured the oral histories of scores of polio survivors, those who lived through what he calls the most feared scourge of modern times. He should know. He, too, lived the horror. And my experience is somewhat different from a lot of people who had polio. Um, a, I had polio after the vaccine. Um, there was a shortage of vaccines in northern Wisconsin in 1955. And the public health authorities made what was a good public health decision, and that is to give the vaccine to the kids who were going to school. And because of my birthday and so forth, my parents had decided that I wasn't, they were going to hold me out a year. And so I didn't get the vaccine because I wasn't going to school. And so in September of 1955, I, um, I came down with polio. I remember my <clears throat> parents taking me to the hospital and I could see them leave the room. I remember 
um, standing in the crib and screaming my head off because they were leaving me there. Its clinical name is poliomyelitis, but everyone knew it as polio, a virus, most often transmitted by contaminated food and water. It is highly contagious. Once it invades the body, the virus spreads, targeting the digestive and nervous systems. Along the way, it wreaks havoc on muscles and nerves as it destroys the neurotransmitters that signal the brain to control motor functions. Those lucky enough to survive paralytic polio often faced a slow, painful recovery, lasting months or years. For many others, the paralysis was permanent. The CDC estimates that about 450,000 people had polio between 1938 and the early 1960s. Um, now that's probably undercounted a bit. Polio was not just a 20th century phenomenon. It's been around since antiquity. Notice the withered limb on this ancient Egyptian carving. Historians point to this and others like it as evidence polio has been with us for thousands of years. Cases are found worldwide with the first identifiable outbreaks of the disease reported in the 19th century. In the ensuing decades, polio epidemics become increasingly severe. By 1952, an all-out national emergency is at hand with 58,000 new cases, most of them children, most hitting in the summer months. They were what I've sometimes called summers of fear. So ordinary kinds of activities that the kids would do in the summer were, were changed out of a fear of polio. By the early 50s, drastic measures were called for and all of America watched as teams of medical researchers fought a very public battle against the polio virus. Dr. Julius Younger is the only surviving member of the scientific dream team that was headed by Dr. Jonas Salk, the man credited with finding the first successful vaccine against polio. So there were uh, five of us. There was Byron Bennett, uh, Jim Lewis, Basley, and myself, and Jonas. That was it. Younger is the last link to the historic battle against polio. Even he is resigned to the fact that polio has all but faded from public awareness. Well, people become complacent when the disease isn't around anymore. But during the first half of the 20th century, polio was not only around, it was an everyday presence, thanks in large part to Franklin D. Roosevelt. When polio revisited returns, the legacy of FDR how a very personal battle inspired a nation to action. And later, we'll meet a woman whose bout with polio required her to live in an iron lung for virtually her entire life. <laughs>